What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to another training guide. Today we are taking a look at this absolute beast, Benacer. Now, this guy has kind of piqued my interest a little bit because I've come up against him a few times, and a lot of you guys are asking for my opinion on him and for a training guide. So, first thing that we're going to look at is his balance in terms of player skills and stats, and obviously, does he have unwavering form, which he doesn't have. Um, it's not a deal breaker for this card, I don't think, but I do think that it is something to just keep in mind, right? So we do have two training guides for him. I do like the fact that he has got double touch, one touch pass, and interception. They're three really unique and varied player skills because you've also got sliding tackle and fighting spirit. And then double touch is going to mean that you're going to be able to do those, you know, have those little animations um, with different motion styles as well, especially as a DMF. Because he is a kind of a smaller base DMF, you're going to be able to pull off a lot of nice dribbles with him in dangerous areas that you can just kind of, you know, dominate midfield in possession if you are playing possession. Now, I do think that this guy kind of is suited. The build that I have, the first build defensively, is suited to a possession-based play style or playing out wide. So, yeah, I definitely do like him. Um, and a few people that have kind of got him have said that he's just a monster in defending. So that is kind of why we went for the training guide with this one, right? So it's just a quick, short and sweet video. Um, the AC Milan man is an orchestrator, so he's the same build and same playing style as Kimmich. And you know the, the role Kimmich plays for me is extremely good. He just kind of like sits back. He's not an anchorman, so to speak, but he does help out defensively. And then he has the skills to be able to get forward. Like, and with this card, right, even though we've kept a lot of his offensive skills down, down. Uh, we still do have 80 acceleration, 82 balance, 75 speed and 83 stamina and then you've got ball control all the way with dribbling, tight possession, low pass and lofted pass all in the mid 80s, like low to mid 80s, right? But the real strength lies in his defense, right? Which as an orchestrator, because he doesn't have those natural kind of instincts to stay back with, you know, Anchorman or Destroyer as his playing style, you do need to overcompensate a little bit with the defense, right? So defensive awareness, tackling, aggression and engagement, we've got all those fairly high, as high as we can possibly go. We've 14 points pumped into defending, but we still have, as I mentioned, we still have the other um, attributes that we have, right? With this defensive build as well, if you want to play him a little bit more quick pace and you want to do quick passing, you do have the one-touch pass. So when you do have one-touch pass, I kind of liken it to if you are playing, um, you know, as a newcomer or whatever, and you want to keep the ball moving, I do recommend guys uh, with one-touch pass to be put into your team, like players to be put in with one-touch pass. And it also helps as well that with the passing at the mid-80s, you are going to get a lot of those animations, you know, a little bit quicker. But look, the game can be a bit weird sometimes, so it doesn't really register if there's input delay, but that is something to keep in mind. Now, that defensive guy is an absolute monster at a 92 overall. This version of him is slightly built uh, for offensive football, right? And as I said, we've really overcompensated and maxed out his low pass. And I think this is probably overkill. And I'm going to just make a real um, time suggestion here based on, you know, not just his overall, not just his overall stats, but I don't think you need the passing that high. If this was me, I would probably cap the passing at like 88. I would even cap it at maybe 87 because that one touch pass if you are going to be playing him with one touch pass, you are going to be keeping the ball moving as quickly as you possibly can. So I do think that 87, 88 is probably a perfect one. And then depending on your play style, if you want him to be a little bit more, um, you know, offensive bringing the ball forward, we can obviously boost up his dribbling four, which brings us up to like 89 dribbling, 89 tight possession, 87 low pass. Or if we want to kind of limit that a little bit, we could also put up the dexterity one and then we can pump up, uh, you know, maybe like his possession game or whatever style that we want to play out wide or whatever to get the 99 team play style if you want to up that. So there are two builds for him. One is a very offensive based build. The other is a really dominant defensive build. I would probably like say that this defensive build is definitely more in line with where I would like to put him. You know, if you're if that's too defensive for you, you could cap the awareness at 85 with 12 points into it. And then you could try and kind of make him a little bit more well-rounded. If you want him to be hassling the ball quite a lot, you can pump up his acceleration to 84. If you're not worried about that, you can pump up his speed and his stamina if you want to be tracking back a lot of balls. And if you want a little bit of options to pass the ball a bit better, you could bring it up to 87. Or similarly, you could do that with the dribbling. So it's kind of a really good card to train up and one that has surprised me. So that is it for me, lads. I'll be back quite soon with another training guide or two. And of course, we will be live streaming tomorrow, Thursday, the 30th as well. So until next time, peace.